Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff Lamalva. I'm the town engineer for the town of Manchester. With me tonight is John DiBiase. He's got my assistant town engineer and also the project designer. I wanna thank you for attending the meeting tonight for the Gardner Street Reconstruction Project. Uh, quickly, just a uh, format uh, of the meeting will be, I will give a very brief introduction. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to John to discuss our preliminary plan. And then we're gonna open it up to comments and questions. Um, so real quickly, uh, the reason that we're here tonight, um, it's for us to present and discuss the preliminary plan that we uh, was on our website that hopefully you guys took a look at. I do wanna uh, say that it is a preliminary plan to keep that in mind. It was a starting point to gather feedback. So nothing's written in stone. We're hoping to take some of your input from tonight as well as other comments we've received and fine tune that into something that we hope uh, kind of meets the project goals as well as addresses most of uh, your concerns. Before I do turn it over to John, I, I wanna mention two things. Uh, the first is um, the public comment period we had mentioned uh, was you know two weeks past this meeting. I think a couple people misconstrued that as um, you know basically the last time you can you can talk to us and that's definitely not the case. Um, it was really meant to kind of uh, kind of put a deadline as to comments when we could get on this plan. But the goal is we're gonna be in contact with each other. If you have questions, comments anytime after that date, certainly reach out to us. You know, as the design develops, we are gonna be probably, you know, asking a couple of you to meet on site if, if, if there are certain impacts related to properties or not. So uh, I just wanted to kind of make that point. Secondly, um, <clears throat> I have received a handful of comments, about probably seven emails so far, and there has been a predominant theme in those, e in those correspondence, and that is um, the road width. Uh, the theme was that a lot of people were asking for us to reduce the road width, the proposed road width of 24 feet, and we are certainly receptive to that. Um, the other predominant theme was uh, support for the pedestrian shared use path um, with some possible modifications to the width of that as well. So again, we're, we're set, certainly open to, to that and I'd like to hear your feedback on that as well. Um, I'm, def I'm not gonna read all of the comments I, I've got in, but they are part of the record, but I do wanna read one of them um, from my friend, Bill O'Neill, who as you probably know, is not only your neighbor, but a well-respected trails advocate. Without Bill's foresight and persistence, we probably would not have such a robust trail system as we do in Manchester. So I just wanna quickly read his email. Dear Jeff, first, I would like to thank Manchester for creating and expanding the bike walk corridors and multi-use trail system throughout town. Yes, the sidewalk proposal on Gardner Street appears to have limited interconnectability. Interconnect However, Francisco Gomes, as a key member of the townwide park study, is looking at expanding bike walk corridors, Lincoln parks, schools, and transportation destinations. Your Gardner Street proposal is part of a potential loop beginning at the Charter Oak Greenway at Gardner Street, traveling south on Gardner Street, west on Lyon Street, across Route 83 to Shallowbrook Lane, following the Power Line Corridor and Golf Course, maintenance routes north to Fern Street, then north behind Martin School, alongside the Globe Hollow Swimming Area, through Fitzgerald Field, under Route 384, and back to the Charter Road Greenway. Hopefully the sidewalk gaps in Gardner Street are on the townwide sidewalk program, and hopefully the townwide park study will address this route and identify the shared roadway, roadside multi-use trails, and multi-use trails throughout the power line corridor and watershed property. For the Gardner Street project, please consider a cross-section with two nine-foot travel lanes, one-foot shadow lanes, concrete curbing, eight-foot multi-use trail sidewalk adjacent to the east curb. I am in conversation with the Girl Scouts to confirm that this safe road bike walk corridor would allow them to expand their program options 
to include walking, cycling, hiking, merit badges. How should the abutters interested in gas service pursue this effort in advance of your contribution? Thank you for your patience. Regards, Bill O'Neill. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to John. He'll give a brief kind of a walk through through our preliminary plan, and then we'll open it up to comments. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining the meeting. I'm going to try and share my screen here for a moment. Now, if that works successfully, you should see uh, our, G our town's GIS map uh, showing the area of Gardner Street. So I, I just wanted to kind of reiterate the project is to reconstruct and rehabilitate this section of Gardner Street. The project limits are on the northern end, uh, the intersections of Fern Street, uh, where a previous project um, I believe was a year or so ago left off. So um, we had paved southerly to a point we're going to pick up from that point, and we want to be able to uh, continue uh, uh, improving the corridor heading southerly. The southern limit is actually going to be down um, not quite to Line Street. We actually decided to shorten it for a couple of reasons, but um, the goal is to run the project down to somewhere in the vicinity of that existing trail crossing that is um, not obvious to the drivers and not obviously well marked either for uh, folks in the area. So what we want to do is um, remove the existing roadway and pavement uh, down to the base and then rebuild back up uh, after doing a little bit of uh, regrading in the area. I'm going to just mute everybody for a moment just so I can make it through this. Um, so the overall length of the, the project's about 3,700 feet or seven tenths of a mile. Uh, as Jeff had mentioned, uh, the plan is going to be to have a uh, roadway width. Uh, in this concept, we proposed uh, 24 feet, which is the normal um, narrowest width we would typically use in a, a town project. However, as, again, as Jeff had mentioned, we're very open to uh, making changes to that. But the goal is to have a, a a uniform width through the corridor. The, uh, again, the width uh, in the concept is 24 feet. Uh, we're proposing extruded concrete curbing in the area to help with uh, drainage and to kind of maintain a, a proper edge of the road. And then to include a six foot wide uh, bituminous concrete or asphalt path on the east side of the road from uh, at the end of the existing sidewalk that's on the east side in the vicinity of Fern Street southerly to at least in this project to that trail crossing and to also go about formalizing uh you know with uh, ramps and a little bit more possibly signage to formalize that trail crossing and that seems like a logical place to extend the, the multi-use path to um, if you've had the opportunity to uh go on our website the engineering website we have a, a copy of uh uh, a couple of sheets that show this concept and uh, approximate impacts uh, that um, you know could be encountered in the project. Again, it's a concept, and so a lot of this is subject to change. But um, it gave us, or hopefully, will give us a good starting point that we can have a discussion about uh, what some of your concerns might be. Uh, I've gone and kind of tried to reprint this um, from our uh, design software, uh, so it's one long continuous sheet here. Um, I kind of mouse through it and try and point out a couple of uh, key locations just so you can get your bearings and hopefully this is a little easier to, to understand. So where we are right now is the southern end of Gardner Street. We're about uh, 600 feet from the turn where it becomes Lime Street and heads out towards uh, South Main Street. Uh, right here is the uh, approximate location of that trail crossing as it is today and then moving to the right side of the screen uh, to the right side of the page is heading northerly. So um, starting off, uh, we have, again, the 24 width, uh, foot width of the road. Uh, we have uh, curbing on both sides, which is shown in purple. Uh, we have uh, a minimum one and a half foot wide uh, utility shelf for um, uh, ideally uh, utility poles, mailboxes, uh, snow in the wintertime. 
Um, it, it is locations where we'll have the opportunity to make it a little bit wider and there's other spots where, you know, we'll most likely end up reducing that uh, to um, uh, minimize a couple of particular impacts. Um, heading up the hill, um, there is a, a narrow spot that would require some widening. Uh, in this proposal, um, you know, we have a, a, a six foot retaining wall approximately here. Um, it could be minimized with, uh, you know, some further grading beyond that. It will require us to go out and uh, do some additional surveying. And you may see us doing some additional surveying uh, near your property as well, um, you know, just to fill in some of the details as we go through this developing a, our iterative process, developing the design. Uh, heading northerly, um, we start to uh, come up to the, the Girl Scout camp on the left. They have a couple of driveways that are in this area. Um, the road uh, width is contained to uh, the town's uh, public right-of-way. Um, so that's the, the property inside of which the town has you know, control over to put public facilities, sidewalk, road, uh, certain utilities. Um, it's a little hard to see, but there's a um, uh, dashed red line on one side and a dashed red line on the other side. And those are the, uh, the, the limits of that right of way. And beyond that are um, you know, the, the parcels belonging to some of these homes and, and uh, organizations like the Girl Scouts that are adjacent and abutting the roadway. For the most part, in these kind of areas, the impacts are really going to be limited to um, regrading the roadside. So some of the, the, the lawns uh, and the roadside will need to, um, you know, smooth out to kind of match into uh, the existing. As part of this project, we're going to have to adjust the, the road's elevation in order to uh, help it drain a little bit. As uh, you may be aware, there's some areas where the, the road condition is really poor and um, uh, getting some of that water off of the road so it's it's yeah, we can kind of break that freeze thaw cycle that's breaking the road apart um, will be uh, beneficial. Um, as we kind of get out uh, into the open a little bit, uh, we have the first house here on the left, 606. There's two uh, existing catch basins on the, the west side of the street that discharge um, to the rear of that parcel. Um, we're proposing some minor drainage work here, um, adding, replacing one of the existing catch basins most likely, and adding an additional catch basin to the east side of the street where there's currently no catch basins today. Um, this would help provide a, a, a path to get some of the water off of the road during any kind of rain or, or snow events. Um, heading further north, this is a very flat area, which is also kind of a, a design challenge. Um, we can't raise the road too far up or down um, to put a pitch on it in the longitudinal direction um, without having um, you know a lot of impacts to the to the abutters. So um, it's something that we're kind of working through, but you know again looking for some feedback. Um, heading further north, um, we're getting to um, uh, near the top of that hill where everyone I'm sure is aware that the roadway is at its narrowest. Um, and the, uh, the ability for um, two vehicles to pass each other in opposing directions is uh, particularly challenging, especially if it's uh, um, a vehicle on the larger side. Um, if you happen to be a, a you know, pedestrian, you know, walker, or biker on the roadway, it's, it's a, a, a difficult place to be in currently. And again, to improve the safety, um, you know, we're hoping to be able to provide an alternative location with the path or for people that want to use the road, uh, that it's a little wider to make it a little safer. In this area, um, as we're getting up here, this is uh, the vicinity of the top of the hill. Um, we have uh, some guide rail currently on the west side of the street uh, adjacent to this property. Uh, cresting and going down the hill is a little bit more guide rail on the west side as well. Um, in this particular concept, again, a stress concept, um, it's maybe at I hate to say extreme, but at one of the, the extreme ends of what we can possibly do, in this case, um, proposed a possibility of lowering the road enough that we could potentially uh, reduce or even eliminate some of the guide rail that's currently there. And that's by uh, you know, reducing the, the drop-off that's currently there on the side of the road. 
the downside to that, and you know, we recognize this as well, as it requires particularly tall retaining walls on the east side of the road, which is an impact to the the residents of of those properties that you know we obviously need to 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 work with, hopefully, and to talk to. Um, I, I think ultimately we're, we're going to likely find a, a spot in the middle with the elevation of the road where we'll, we'll unfortunately likely still end up needing to keep the guide rail uh, on the on the, the west side of the street today, but um, you know reduce the need uh, and the height of potential retaining walls that I have shown here in, in purple. Um, the, there are, um, you know, some spots where we we do need to get some additional survey. I, I have a gap here that you can kind of see it looks a little funny in my wall. Um, some of these could potentially be reduced by, you know, hopefully discussions with the property owner if people are more receptive to uh, us grading further onto the private property. We may be able to, you know, eliminate the retaining walls in some spots altogether, or further reduce their heights. Um, this area is really going to control a, a good portion of the, the project as far as what we can do and you know what people are receptive to us doing. Um, again, this is sort of one extreme. I expect um, we'll continue to refine this and make adjustments, and, and that'll have, of course, the impact of reducing the, the, the need and or the heights of those walls. Continuing north, um, there's uh, there's a spot where there's um, uh, actually, this is uh, on the west side is where there's the new house in the rear that's currently being built, I believe, or the foundation is being constructed. Um, opposite that is um, there's a pretty big hill with a utility pole right at the top of it um, that is pretty much in the area of where we would, you know, like to be able to extend the path to, and, and that would require a um, uh, retaining wall. And again, depending on how we are able to do the grading, um, you know, that height be varied as well. Um, when it comes to retaining walls, um, if, if you've had the opportunity to, to see one of our other recent projects, like on Hillstown Road, we've installed a, a couple retaining walls. They're made from precast concrete blocks. They have a decorative face. They have a decorative top. Uh, we're able to kind of stagger the tops a little bit to give it a little more of a, a better aesthetic appearance. Um, I, I think they look fantastic. Um, those are the types of uh, walls, if we do need to use and construct them, that we would want to use in this project as well. I think it's very suiting to um, uh, the area. Uh, continuing north, uh, um, getting up near um, you know, O'Neill's property, uh, this is where it kind of opens up as we approach Winding Hill. In this area, you know, we have some opportunities to, to maybe move the path closer to the edge of the town's right away line, pull it further away from the road. And here we would make um, some type of crossing, uh, keep changing it, but uh, we'd put uh, sidewalk ramps in on both sides of Winding Hill to allow, you know, somebody if they're on bike or rollerblading or cross country skiing that could potentially cross the street here and continue northerly. Um, at this location, this is the site of um, another spot we're proposing minor drainage improvements. Uh, there's currently two catch basins on the east side, more on the Winding Hill Road side of the street than on Gardner Street. Um, one of them is in a state of disrepair, want to replace that, likely replace the other catch basin, and then if possible, um, propose to extend the um, storm pipes to two new catch basins on the Gardner Street side. And then this water um, connects an existing drainage system that goes um, surprisingly up Winding Hill, uh, just around the corner, and it discharges uh, to the rear of the properties on the north side there. So this would help collect water coming down the hill from the area we were, I was just speaking about um, and it intercepted before it you know, flows as it currently probably does uh, further north on Gardner Street. Um, continuing north past Lining Hill, um, the roadside, oops, I'm sorry, I'm off the sheet here, so on to my second sheet. So again, um, we're particularly limited in the, the town's available riding, right away. Here is Lining Hill Road again. Um, the, the, Biggest potential impact uh, uh, as far as a need for uh, an easement or an agreement with the, the 
putting uh, property owners in this area here where the, the right of way is um, at its narrowest. Um, you know, it's something we don't have uh, a lot of space really to, to to wiggle the road around. And that's one thing too, that was another comment we received is concerns about us just straightening the road. And we really can't, um, you know, we've, we've uh, addressed some of the, the curvature a little bit here, but it's generally retained um, the same horizontal curves, uh, the same vertical curves. We we can't we can't get it. We couldn't if we wanted to get this road to meet our current standards for a brand new street. However, there are things that we can do to to improve it from the condition that it's currently in. Um, heading north, the uh, multi-use path kind of dips back um, to the road again. It's it's pretty much right up against the line. There's not really a lot of space for us to increase the, the separation here. Continuing north, um, this is the area where um, I think if you recall uh, a few months back, some of the trees were removed um, on the east side of the street to improve the, the sight line. Again, the road is kind of in its same alignment as it wiggles going down the hill. Um, the road side is particularly steep in this area, um, so you know, require a little bit of grading, um, but more or less maintaining roughly the, the same uh, grade of the roadside of the lawns as, as they were before. Um, continuing north, I hate to say it's more of the same, but it, it's um, very similar. And then um, as we get kind of down to the bottom of the hill, here we approach the southern uh, fork of Fern Street. Um, you know, just roughed in. What we propose to do is, is um, improve the the curbing and the uh, the geometry at the uh, at the corners of the intersection um, will most likely repave the intersectional area. Um, yeah, you know, I just have it kind of roughed in here to show you roughly what the limits would be. The section of first street I think was paved not that long ago, so we we're not really looking to to venture too far down that. Just enough to kind of get our road grade to match into that, so there's a smooth transition between uh, both streets. Um, continuing up, there is a, a narrow spot where it's pretty steep on both sides, and, and we would cut that back a little bit and, and, and regrade outwards. And then as we get to the bottom of the hill, we hit that North Fork of Fern Street, where um, you know in some fashion we'll, we'll likely adjust the curbing here. And then at this point, generally at this intersection, uh, Gardner Street itself actually um, widens up to uh, a wider, more uniform uh, cross section. It continues with that width northerly up towards Spring Street. Um, at this point, um, we would kind of swing the, the path out and have it match into that existing uh, concrete sidewalk on the east side. And then this would take you, um, you know, most of the way up up Gardner Street towards the, towards the East Coast Greenway. Um, Jeff did mention um, uh, in Bill's letter, there was um, a couple, one or, one or two gaps um, Bill O'Neill had made reference to they're on our radar to hopefully fill and complete those gaps in the sidewalk in the future. And then I think, um, you know, ideally post project, we have this um, great connection between the, the, the trail, which leads to Case Mountain, to, you know, the Winding Hill neighborhood, all the folks here would have access to it, and they can take you to um, other locations, you know, to the north, the East Coast Greenway, and other places in town. So. Um, that is pretty much, I think, the, the gist of this. I will um, stop sharing. And then I guess, um, does anybody that would like to start off if they have any questions Thanks. or comments? Thanks, John. Um, I'm still getting used to these virtual meetings. It's been almost a year. I found the best with this many participants is if maybe I go around and actually call on individual and then if, if you have a comment let, let us hear it if you don't if you could just say no comment so that that will keep it kind of organized so i'm going to start um uh, with steve o'neill happy to do it thanks for letting me kick it off um usually i'm sitting in your chair <laughs> not mine uh, great job, guys. Really, you've done a really nice layout. You know, 100% support of the project. 
Um, obviously, I'm a big proponent of reducing, making sure we keep the speeds low. And I think the way to do that is to make certain that we cut that cross section down to 18 feet, 20 feet, whatever it may be. Um, and I think, you know, that with that four foot reduction, getting down to 20 and get 18, six feet, that's going to let us address the snow shelf. You know, one and a half foot snow shelf, there's nothing's going to grow in there. And so that's going to be a mess for us to try to maintain as we go forward. So a uniform snow shelf of at least four feet is, is a pretty um, kind of a standard thing. It's going to allow us to, to get something to look nice in there as well. Uh, as far as the side path goes, you know, shared use path, it's really not that because you need a minimum eight foot based on hash toe. Um, so shared use path. I get it. You know, one of the things we want to make sure we, we want to do is make sure we don't have the bicyclist coming down that, that side path doing 30 miles an hour as uh, John Vicky's walking his dog out there. So we, so I think balancing those are very important and utilizing the um, extra space you have from that 24 cross section is important. As far as guide rails, uh, you did mention guide rails uh, kind of up near uh, kind of after Winding Hill Road. Um, I would certainly encourage a town to look at more rustic uh, Guide, guide rails, you know, given this is a low volume, low speed roadway, and thus the ability to cut the cross section down and kind of provide a more aesthetic um, guide rail as well. Um, the other point, I just uh, ramps down on the North Fork of um, Fern Street. I think there maybe probably should be a handicap ramp there just so folks can get down and access Fern Street. That's a big walking route as well. Um, so I think that would be helpful. I agree with my dad filling in the gaps on North of Joyce Lane of the sidewalk should be you know is, is important because that's the that's the last piece and it kind of breaks the entire pedestrian mobility within the corridor as far as retaining walls you've got some big ones on there we get it you know that those are tough areas um but i also want to think about if we're pushing some retaining walls up high I just think about the adjacent property owners if they need protection with landscaping or guide rails or whatever as soon as you get over two or three feet make sure we don't have a fall situation that puts the town at risk so making sure you continue to work with the um with the adjacent uh, butters you know as far as tree canopy goes you know we do a pretty good job up the winding hill as you go by my house and up through the curves obviously we're going to lose some um significant uh tree stock which is i'm fine with that it was all farmland way back when but i just think it's important that we flag some of those so folks get a no one's surprised that those are the trees we're taking down to those are the trade-offs for pedestrian and bicycle access along the road um one thing construction inspection maintenance protection of traffic i you know um, I, I know you guys did your best when they did lower gardner street but it was a disaster and uh, so if we can tighten up that spec and make sure we have some you know some bite in there and maybe have some a little bit tighter inspection to make sure things are cleaned up and keeping the neighbors involved in regards to obviously they're going to be closing sections of the roadways with detours just because of the topography which makes sense and just keep us informed so we know where to go so we don't keep getting caught as we come back from Island Park Market. Um, I think that would be good. The question I have is utility poles. You know, I know that they did a little bit of replacement there, obviously. So if the goal is to get it into the snow shelf, again, that further accentuates the importance of the wider snow shelf. If you've got a one and a half foot snow shelf with the utility pole in it and an adjacent six foot side path, that effectively reduces that side path you know, down to four or three feet because you've got to stay away from that pole if you're on a bike or whatever. So just keep the, those things in mind as you go forward. But great job. And um, I'll, I'll write these comments down and send them informally and more than happy to meet with you. The last one is I have a an easement uh, for my drive. I have a shared driveway with my neighbor, uh, Mr. Bill O'Neill. And uh, so I'm always worried he's going to take that away from me. And uh, me and I'm his son. So, so those people that don't know out there, I'm his kid. Uh, but I do have uh, the need to make sure I have a driveway apron to access for my property for future sales purposes. So I want to make sure that's incorporated into the plan. And uh, so those are pretty much my comments. But again, great job, and we're looking forward to it. Thanks, Steve. Those are some good comments. Um, yeah, I think if we do reduce the road, uh, we would be able to get a, a larger shelf uh, and possibly, uh, like we did on Hillstown Road, we. We had a three or four foot consistent shelf, but there were areas like John said, where if you wanted to trade off from an eight foot high retaining wall to a smaller one and maybe move the shelf, certain critical areas, maybe down to two or three. Absolutely agree. 
same thing because once you're adjacent to the retaining wall, start squeezing the actual effective use of that of that treadway, if you will. Okay. All right. Um, Leslie, any comments? Sorry, John, did you mute? Yeah, I tried a little feedback that I muted it. Um, hey, I don't know if you guys can hear me. Um, I'm at work, so I can't talk right now. So continue on, please. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Jay, there's a little feedback there. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh. Yep, now I can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Um, so I apologize, I missed the first uh, few moments and I think it answered one of my questions as to what was driving this project, because my feeling is Gardner Street up on this end has basically been neglected for 20 years. We haven't even had road surfacing. And now we have this huge project. And I think from the tail end that I caught, it's because of this want to connect with the bike trail. Am I correct in that? No, no. The um, the project was it's part of our townwide road resurfacing program. So, um, you know, Gardner Street, this leg of Gardner Street, it, it's it's the time has come up for it actually gets funded to be resurfaced. And when we go in to look at streets. Uh, like this, you know, we want to see if there's any improvements safety wise that we could make as well as uh, we look at a, a, We have a complete streets policy that the board of directors and planning and zoning commission adopted where we have to look at connections and sidewalks and things like that to to incorporate into the project. So the, the, the sidewalk or the trail didn't um, make the project come up. The, 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 the need for road repairs did. I mean, this, um, it's been, like you said, more than 20 years and it, it, since Garden Street has been repaved. So um, it really is. Uh, uh, do, you, do you know when it was repaved last? I do not, but I'm guessing it's probably more than 20 or 25 years. Those are 40. A lot of the things that we are doing are have been 30 to 40 years, early 80s and or mid 80s. My concern about a project of this scope is this is a very special area of Manchester. It is one of the very last rural residential areas. And I think that this project will change the character of this whole area. And I think that would be an absolute shame. I don't think people come to this area to have a wide pathway to walk on or to bike on. I think they're here because there's lots of trees. I completely disagree with Steve O'Neill to say that, hey, this used to be pasture land and, oh, well, we're going to miss some trees, but, oh, well. No, the people come here because this is wooded, it's peaceful, it's getting back to nature. And at this crisis time of 
you know, global warming and, you know, environmental impact, we are going to not only widen the road, but put down more asphalt so people can ride on asphalt. I, I just don't agree with this project going forward and doing all this in such a uh, pristine area to make, a, I, I don't know what to say. I think that this project should have started at this point with input from the people who live here, the people who are the taxpayers, the residents, to see what their feeling is about the road. Not so much for the people who are going to come and use this as recreation land. It's great that we can share this, and we have shared it. We have shared it to an nth degree. But this has also brought lots of people outside of the town, outside of our state, it has generated a lot of traffic. It has generated volume of traffic. It has generated um, high speeds of traffic. And I don't think it's in the best interest of the taxpaying residents of this street. I think it's in the best interest of people looking at this as a recreational area from my house, which is the last house on the eastern part of the road, to the bike trail is 1.2 mile. And I think there's an awful lot of, you know, not only expense, but disruption of people's property for 1.2 miles of additional bike trail and a widening of the road. I totally agree with, you know, fixing the road, but I just think that this scale of this project just does not belong in this neighborhood. Okay, thank you. You you did come late. We did talk right up front about how uh, this is a concept and, you know, it's not set in stone. We're, we're actually, this is your opportunity to provide the feedback you are um, and the, the other thing was that uh, the road width was definitely um, predominant in the comments that I have received to date. So we are very receptive in reducing that road width. The other th comment I do want to make is um, whether or not, you know, you agree with having the sidewalk or not. Um, our, in our plan, our master sidewalk plan adopted by the Planning and Zoning Commission, it does identify this area, as well as other rural areas in town, Lime Street, Bush Hill, um, as a bituminous kind of a shared use type of path, as opposed to like a concrete sidewalk to kind of maintain some of the rural characteristics. So. But a concrete sidewalk, which I literally measured at the bottom, which is the one we're going to connect to, is three feet at its, five, at its five, widest. Five feet. The, no, I went and I measured it, and it's three feet. Okay. It's 36 inches. And then up here where we have many houses, mine especially, which is very close to the road and has no access for this, then we're proposing a six-foot wide pathway and a one and a half utility shelf and a road. And I, I, again, I think this will change the entire character of this neighborhood and this part of Manchester, which people enjoy, I think, very much the way it is. So I, I will I will say that, yes, there there is a um, section of sidewalk that we're tying into that's from a older it was built i think as part of an older subdivision i use subdivision loosely because i think it was really just for um when a, a parcel was broken into a couple parcels it doesn't meet uh that section doesn't meet the requirements i think uh, if we were to build it new like that for um you know ada and and, and related um you know in the future when that 
sidewalk uh, gets to its end of service life, when it does get replaced, it will likely be replaced as slightly larger. Um, but again, it, it's it's dependent upon you know certain characteristics of the the area, like you pointed out. Um, uh, you know, the the, the multi-use path designation, yes, uh, in, in the master plan is typically uh, uh, has a, a larger width, eight feet, um, typically. Um, however, as, as Steve pointed out, that um, smaller than that doesn't quite meet that standard either. But that's kind of why we're here. We've presented uh, a concept, a rough concept. Uh, it's sometimes easier to react to a concept than no concept and to kind of help spur the conversation along and, and you know we appreciate your feedback yeah sorry uh i don't uh, i don't know anybody on the line besides will hey okay, well um i just want to give you my opinion so i've lived in the neighborhood for six years i'm not from connecticut i moved here uh, i lived in ohio for a long time moved here from california um and i moved to this neighborhood because it was quiet it's not like an urban space like I, I took on the risk of owning a property with septic and well, and you know, it's kind of like an unknown space. And I'm looking at you guys and I'm an engineer and I manage to uh, facilities like maintenance for 3M. Um, I look at you guys pulling like spend a million bucks that you sure as hell better be pulling sep, you know, <laughs> city sewer and water up here with this, right? You're gonna spend a million bucks for the use of who? Um, and I look at the way the road's been maintained, right? And how are you going to maintain this space? Like I, I'm a cyclist, I use all these paths around town. Um, if you want to spend money in this neighborhood, build a parking lot for Line Street so people aren't parking off the side of the road. And right, I have young kids, four and six. Um, it's not the the road use, and you know it definitely is too narrow. I agree with the widening, but cutting down, you know, multi, multi dozen uh, mature trees that in any of our lifetimes are never gonna come back. I, I don't see how that's justified and definitely like, right, <laughs> you're not gonna, I'm sure you're not gonna pull utilities up here because I see the way the, the houses are pitched from the road. You're not gonna build a, uh, a sewer system 20 feet underground, you know? Um, I, so I don't know who this is for. Um, it's definitely not for the residents of this neighborhood. Uh, we walk on the road as it is, we use it as it is, we deal with the condition that it's in. And uh, I really worry about, you know, what it's going to look like in 10 years as a property owner here, right? Are you guys going to bring people out here and maintain concrete, build on a, you know, 12 to 15% grade, right? <laughs> After I see all the frost heave and, the, uh, you know, the, the guys come up here and maintain it. And are you going to have somebody in a wheelchair who moves into Winding Hill roll in on a 15% grade downhill to blind driveways? Like I see like it's access, you know, we have so handicapped people can get in this, but how, how are you going to protect anybody who uses those properties? Um, my neighbors across the street, it's not going to affect my property um, where I live at 456 Gardner, but definitely the people across the street, right? People are gonna be buzzing their driveway blind the way that it's gonna roll in um, unless you build it up on their, um, you know, up on the, the bluff after you cut down the you know, 120 year old white oak tree there. Um, they're gonna be pulling out their driveway worried about who they're gonna hit, you know, more than it is now that we have line of sight for the hill as it is. But um, yeah, I just, I'd be concerned about the safety things. I think it brings liability to the town. It definitely degrades the neighborhood. And you guys put this in, then what's the budget to maintain it? Like you, you have to put that in, right? You're going to be spending a bunch of money over the next decade plus to actually to use it. I've ridden on the bike paths on the north end of town going into South Windsor where people don't use it, right? I, I ride that during the summer. It's nothing but weeds and it's overgrown. It's all cracked and that's concrete, right? That's not asphalt like the new stuff that's built. So like what's that going to do to the neighborhood long term? You know, you're going to turn what is, in in my opinion, a pristine neighborhood, and it's the reason I lived. Yeah, I moved here, right? I, I make enough money. I could have chosen to live in Glastonbury or bought a house where I wanted to, but I chose this neighborhood because it's it's beautiful. It's quiet. Um, I don't care if people walk them down the street. You know, they drive too fast. The cops in the neighborhood don't don't police that at all. But um, you guys cut in this. You cut down all these trees. You know, that's it's never going to come back. So I think you got to really think about what that is and what it does for long term. Um, and like I said, if you want to do something that makes Manchester better, then cut up some of the, the sick forest around that Lion Street parking lot. 
that's growing in swamp where those trees aren't meant to be um, based on the way it's graded now. Um, that, that's what people care about. Like that's what people would come to this part of the, you know, Manchester for is to use the trail system and, you know, them having some path that a few people care about. Um, that's not going to do anything really for the town. So that, that's my opinion on it. All right. Thank you, sir. Hey Seth, um, I'm going to hop in next, um, seeing as I live across the street from Jane and I'm buddies with Seth. Um, I did grow up in Manchester. I've lived here for my whole life, except for a few years when I was out of state in college and, and er working early on. Um, you know, I, I ran cross country at MHS and trained at Case Mountain and grew up in the Highland Park area and have been coming here to ride and run um, basically my whole life. Uh, my parents still live over the Highland Park area, right off Porter Street. Uh, my mom comes over here to walk her dog for all the reasons that um, Seth and Jane are, are, are mentioning. Um, trees, it's quiet. It's like a, a five minute drive to you know Western Mass or Southern Vermont for a lot of people. Um, I'm still really connected with the cycling community, the running community. Um, I run on this road every single day. Um, no matter whether it's winter, summer, no matter what, I'm out there. Um, I mountain bike in the trails all the time. I cross country ski out of my backyard down, down the side of the street and up into the trails. Um, and that's why I moved here. Um, you know, I, I, I like the narrow road. Um, I like the trees. Uh, a lot of people in those communities that I still spend a lot of time in tell me that I have one of the best houses in Manchester. Um, for, I'm the last one on the right, right before the Girl Scout camp. Um, many people have told me that they are envious of my house because of the trees, because of the narrow road. They feel like the, se the second you get up that last little um, bump in the road that you're in another state, you're in another part of not just the town, but the country. You know, it, it, it has that feel. There's mature trees going over the road. There's no curbs. It's a narrow road. Um, you know, there's a there's a trail that kind of just spills out on the road. And yeah, it's not in the best shape, but, um, you know, I think that's part of the appeal, not that we want a bad road, not that I like driving through potholes, um, you know, but um, the feel of the neighborhood, I think, is very, very special to Jane's point. You know, she has one of the most beautiful properties up here. And, you know, I said to her husband, Rit, I, I would hate to see uh, a path run through their front yard because I like looking at that as I drive by. And, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of recreation in the town. And I think that there's a, a place for the paths, I, you know, I, I think I used to work at Manchester Cycle and I think what, um, you know, Bill O'Neill has done with the East Coast Greenway is awesome. It's brought a lot of recreation to town. I'm not against any of that. Um, I think we just need to be more, you know, thoughtful about this particular spot. You know, it, this is not just another neighborhood in Manchester. And I think I have yet to, to meet someone who wishes the road was wider. You know, all the comments I get about where I live and my property are the opposite. Um, and and I, I would hate to lose that. The, you know, the, the outside of the field of the neighborhood, the, you know, up here, the flat section, people fly past my house. You know, I have a dog, um, people walk their, 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 their kids. Um, you know, whether there's a path or not, you're still gonna have to cross the road. You're, you know, you, you're still gonna have a dog that might run out into the road unintentionally or be on a leash and, and jump in. And, you know, people already go too fast and encouraging that is the complete opposite of what we should be doing. Um, we, if, if we're gonna do anything, we should be focusing on cutting down traffic. This should not be a throughway when 83 is a quarter mile, a half mile down the road. Um, and people use it that way. So straightening the road, widening it is only going to encourage that more. And if we're going to put money and in, in work into the street, we should be doing the opposite. If we're saying it's a recreation area, we shouldn't be widening it. Um, you know, so I think that's a huge concern. And, you know, Steve O'Neill said um, speed of cyclists on the hill. You know, I, I'm not going to ride my road bike on that path down the hill. You know, I'm just not going to do it because I'm going to be doing 35 miles an hour. So I, I, I'm not going to use that path. Um, I know Seth won't, a, a bunch of people won't. They're gonna keep using the road. During the winter, if it's not plowed, I'm not gonna run on it because it's gonna be covered in ice like every other bike path in town. Um, so I'm gonna be in the, in, you know, in the road. Um, and so I, I, I just have questions around, you know, what we're getting out of it. And, and I don't, at this point, I don't think that, that those outweigh um, the negative. Okay, thank you. 
Someone else want to comment? I, I just have to say, you guys, obviously, you guys are doing a good job. I, I love the design in detail. Like, I, I saw the crews out here, and I talked to them. Like, nobody's here to beat you guys up on it. Like, I get it, maybe it feels that way. And if I was in your position, I probably don't want to be fielding this kind of stuff at 7 p.m. at night. Um, but, I will tell you, this is probably the stretch of road where there's the most professional engineers in this, in this neighborhood. In your guys, but um, no, this, this is really this is really much better than having nobody show up and then you build something and then get yelled at. So, you want to try to come to some kind of an agreement? Uh, it sounds it sounds like the road with no question will be looking at reducing that. Um, but the, the sidewalk, I'm seeing I'm, we're, we're hearing different opinions on the sidewalk whether regardless of the width. So again, I'd like to hear some more feedback as well. Yeah, hi, um, this is John Kleinberg. Um, I'm at 516 Gardner. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I've, I've gone over the plan um, at some length and been looking at it. Uh, and I have a number of questions and concerns I'd like to address. Um, so my house is the one uh, right opposite the mouth of Winding Hill. Um, and the, um, there's going to be, the, according to the proposed plan, uh, some taking there because the, uh, the property line right in front of the house and right just about center line to um, juts out to exactly where the current curb is. Um, and it looks like, um, it's a little hard to tell with the scale, but it looks like the, this proposed plan is going to be moving the road about eight, seven, eight, maybe nine feet further into my, uh, from where it is now toward my house, uh, our house. My wife, Betsy, is, is next to me here. Um, so a couple of concerns. One, obviously, I would like to minimize that if possible. Um, and... Uh, that goes to the width of the road, uh, which I also agree would like to keep it as as narrow as it we can, um, while keeping it, you know, with a concern of safety and and, and utility. But um, I agree, given the the nature of the neighborhood, um, and that there's a lot of old houses um, that don't have much setback, and um, minimizing the width of the road would reduce that impact. Um, and I would like to meet with, with someone from your team um, to look at um, what's gonna happen. The, the way that my, my property slopes down to the street from my house, probably a total of about four or five feet um, from, from the house and the grade goes down to the, to the street. If that's cut, seven or eight feet, the grade at my yard will be, I'm guessing about 30, 36 inches. Um, the lawn will be 30 or 36 inches above the street. And I know there's options, like typically I suppose you would grade, want to grade by yard. Um, and my biggest concern with that is that I'll end up with a, a, a grade that's too steep to mow because obviously I'm not going to be going up up and back to the curb. I'm going to be going along the parallel to the curb as I mow the lawn. So I'd like to talk, find out more about how you might plan to handle that, uh, whether the possibility of a retaining wall. Um, but I don't know if you can have a retaining wall directly, uh, you know, at the street or, you know, just how you would handle that. So if we could arrange, um, if one of you might be able to meet with me, you mentioned before that, you know, that was a possibility. I would like to look at that and get your input and, and see what what might happen with that. Um, more generally, um, again, the, the width of the road to minimize impact. Um, and, and regarding the, the trail, um, I, 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 then I have mixed feelings about that. Um, I'm I'm. I've mountain biked, I bike, I utilize, you know, the, the rail trails. Um, I've biked 
Um, my mountain biking days are probably better past me, but I've, I've biked many, many, many times in case and around here. Uh, I still hike and use those properties. But my concern is the impact to um, some of the property owners. That's probably the biggest concern. Um, it's hard to judge from the map, but this path will probably be like spitting distance from people's front doors in some cases, at least three houses that have minimal setback. Uh, the impact's gonna be huge. This is gonna be basically right outside their house. Um, and I guess to me that um, the weight of that is considerable, not to me personally, but to the area and to those individuals that, uh, you know, as much as I, I like the idea of having the whole town inter interconnected with um, bike paths, um, impact to, uh, in some cases, I think is, is pretty high. Um, and anything that can be done to mitigate that, uh, I think is, is uh, would be welcome. Um, another concern about the bike path, and I think it was mentioned, Steve mentioned it in, in passing, uh, that coming down that hill, it's pretty steep. Um, and I think safety would be an issue there um, uh, for people on bikes. Um, also regarding the bike path, um, on the lower section that was done last year uh, of Fern Street, um, I would say that it's not, there aren't gaps. There's most of the street, the better part of the street, less than half the street, you know, just from my eyeballing, it has sidewalks. And it's, you know, some little, some here, a little patch there. Um, if that's done, is that going to be a four foot sidewalk? Is there, or is it going to be a six foot sidewalk? Is it going to be consistent with whatever ends up being built on this section? Um, I wouldn't want to see, you know, a four or six foot section a uh, uh, wide bike path here and then go down there and have a, you know, a three or a four foot wide section. Uh, I think it ought to be consistent. A um, couple of other uh, things. If it ends up being a four foot bike path sidewalk, I don't know if you, at what point you have to, how wide it has to be to be called a multi-use path. Um, if it's a technically a sidewalk, uh, is it legal to ride your bikes on the sidewalk? I'm just curious about that. Um, does anybody know? Uh, yeah, let me jump in and answer a couple of those questions for you. Um, the first being the sidewalks at, uh, along Gardner Street on the lower end, uh, they would be five foot concrete sidewalks because that's what our master plan says because it's a more residential neighborhood, whereas Roads on the outskirts of town, the plan is more to have a bituminous, um, again, shared use or multi-use path. I, you're right in that, um, as Steve said, eight foot is really a minimum standard for a shared use bike path. Um, you're technically not supposed to ride on your bikes on sidewalk, but I can tell you the police aren't in you know, going out and forth on that. So, um, so when you are thinking about this, I know it, it, it's a tough decision. Um, don't don't just look at it as it's got to be a bike path or not. If 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 we if the compromise is a four or five foot wide by two minute sidewalk, just to be able to provide a safe pedestrian trail or, or path, um, and you know that would be an option as well. So. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, a couple of other things, um, and, and this is a universal issue. I mean, as it is, anybody who lives here can tell you that uh, any car that actually drives the limit seems to be, you look at it and say, boy, that guy's crawling along, hardly moving. Um, people typically go 40, 45. I've seen people go faster uh, up the road. And then they'll touch the brakes when they hit the uh, the nasty curbs on the blind hills. Um, and widening it, um, I, I'm just concerned. Uh, not that this is it means you can never ride widen the road, but um, people are just going to go faster um, because it's going to be seem like it's just going to be easier for them to go faster. 
Um, and that's true anywhere, I'm sure. Um, but it's probably, you know, the problem with people speeding down the road, and most any road, I think, will only get worse. Um, one other little thing is on uh, the southern fork of Fern Street, um, when people come up there, as I often do, coming back from town, uh, you, it's not a huge problem because, but you pretty much have to crawl out into the street to be sure nobody's coming up that hill. And um, I don't know if there's a reasonable way to improve line of sight there without, uh, you know, doing, you know, impacting, uh, you know, any, you know, house sitting there or anything. But um, if there is an easy and inobtrusive way to do that, I think it would be helpful. Um, Betsy, do you have anything? No. You want to add? No. No. Okay. She says no. She doesn't want to get in the picture. Uh, so anyway. Uh, Thank you for uh, being receptive and uh, being open to suggestions. Very much appreciated. Um, and how um, how would I arrange for someone from your team to come and talk about you know how this might end up with uh, the edge of my property after uh, sure. you're done chopping into it? Um, if you <laughs> either if you want to either email us or uh, or or email is pwinfo at manchesterct.gov. All right, well, hold on. Or, or you can call, I'll give you a phone number as well. And this is for okay. anyone. Okay. I'm gonna give you John's number. Oh, it's right there, Manchester's. Um, oh, I, we see it at, Got it. at manchesterct.gov. Yep. Okay. I added the, uh, our, our office email address to the chat. Uh, so anyone at any time is welcome to send comments there or questions. Uh, uh, I was going to jump in and say, uh, you know, I'd be happy uh, to come out and meet with you to discuss the impacts. Um, I will say in this current concept, uh, in that particular area of Winding Hill, what we're trying to avoid uh, is to reconstruct part of Winding Hill in the process. So I know the, I, you know, I'm, we're hoping to maintain this is to, to keep Gardner Street pretty close within a foot or so of where it is today elevation wise so the the grading onto you know to like your property in particular um there'll be some but it, it's uh, a lot less compared to you know other locations where the the road side is pretty steep but those are things that uh, uh, you know and if anybody else has the same kind of questions as, as we're able to kind of come to a, hopefully a consensus um you know with the new concept um, and we can kind of start to move towards uh, uh, more final design. These are things that we can kind of discuss in a little more detail that, you know, we can put some stakes out and, and if you, you know, have some concerns or questions, we can kind of go into, um, you know, it's easier to, to address and to discuss. Um, uh, what was I going to add? Oh, uh, and just in, as a general comment, um, when it comes to, to driveways, what we need to do is uh, we need to leave everybody home. So to speak. So you know, if we do raise or lower the roadway as it passes in front of your front of your home and past your driveway, we're going to need to build an apron, uh, a brand new piece at a minimum within uh, the area between the edge of the road and the edge of the street line where your property line is. We'll we'll definitely replace that piece. And in order to get the grade right, so that you can comfortably get your vehicle in and out of your driveway onto the road at its new elevation, we may need to chase that a little bit further and then you'll have a brand new piece of, of driveway that'll transition from your you know, existing driveway elevation to the road whether it needs to go up or down um, you know hopefully in places we're going to try and keep it keep it the same but um, there will be some necessary changes to the elevation of the road uh, you know to, to um, improve it all right I, I, I understand that the the grading I was uh, mentioning and uh, you know it, when you come out I, I think this will be clear is that um, even if the road let's assume that the road is going to be pretty much at the same level it currently is as it passes in front of our property um, the the my yard goes up from from the curb and you know rises probably a good at least four feet to until you get to my house so there's a grade my, my front lawn is graded and pitch down to the existing street. If 
you move the street, uh, and again, according to this, the way it is now, it looks like roughly eight, nine feet maybe um, into my yard. You're going to be have uh, my, my, at that point, my my yard's going to be 30, 36 inches. I'm just guessing above the street. And my question was, how how what would be the possibilities for addressing how that's going to be managed? Are you going to put a little retaining wall there, or are you going to grade the rest of my yard to go down to the street? And if so, my concern is. If that's the only option that you have, my concern is, is that I'll, it'll be too steep for me to mow. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I mow on a riding mower parallel to the street there. Yeah. So we, we um, can definitely meet you out and go over that. In general, um, we try to make we try to grade it out to a mowable slope um, that you can mow. If we can't, then our next um, kind of our next step would be. We have to grade a steeper slope, and instead of grass, maybe we do some thing or some ground cover or something like that. And then, in the worst case, would be but we'll look at that individually with you in the field. Okay, thank you. Hey. Hi, this is Beth Williams. I I live at 476 Gardner and have lived here for over 45 years, and have watched the poor maintenance of the road over those years. Um, where I live is where a lot of the road washes out as all of the water drains down. And I'm not an engineer, so I don't know all of the answers to these things. But from what I looked at, it looks like the storm drains stop at Winding Hill. What is planned as far as to not wash out the road as it comes down the rest of Gardner Street? Um, we're proposing a concrete curbing, which would keep keep the water from running and eroding the property off of that. Well, what's, what, what's happened with the tar curbing is it just washes it out and the road itself. Yeah, I think the current curbing is bituminous and it's probably 40 years old. So um, I could see where, you know, you might have sections that have been knocked out by plows and things, but you know, with a newer newer road and a newer newer curb, uh, concrete curb is a little bit more durable than bituminous, so that that should improve that situation. I also have concerns about the width of the road and the pathway, and um, again, feel that this is a really nice, quiet section of town, and opening things wider and for more speed is not something I would like, and. Um, I mean, at some points, I think we should have speed tables to slow down people more than anything. But just those are comments. So just quickly, are you against a sidewalk at all or are you just against the width of it? Um, probably 70% against it. OK. OK, anybody else? Hey, uh, I was just curious, John and Jeff, where are you guys based out of? Um, uh, our office or is in uh, Lincoln Center at the Main and Center Street. Right now we're, at, well, that's where John is now. Um, I'm at my house in Covington. No, that, that's fine. I just, I wondered if you guys had ever actually been out here and walked the neighborhood. Yeah. They're not engineers, yeah. Many times, yeah. Okay, that, yeah, that doesn't mean they've been here. <laughs> Um, but no, I just, yeah, I just want to make sure that's all. Thank you. No, I've, I've definitely been out there and walked the, the street a couple times now, and I'll be out there a couple more times, uh, many more times before the project's finished. So, um, you know, if I haven't met you yet, then I'm, I'm sure I'll run into you. I, I get where you're going with the question, but I, you know, we'll. You know, yeah, we'll I just, uh, that's fine. I, I'm very used to interacting with engineers who are somewhere else in the country and haven't actually looked at it. So I, for the whole team, I just want everybody on here, I just want to make sure that uh, you guys have seen it at least. We're, uh, you know, unfortunately with COVID, I would have loved to have done this as a bigger group. We could put the plans on the table and have an easier conversation. Unfortunately, you know, we're, we're doing our best. You know, I uh, am you know, usually at home most days uh, in Weathersfield, but when I need to come in, 
to the office, you know, I'm here and I, I will, if we can socially distance and meet, uh, you know, I'm happy to, to, to accommodate that and do that. And hopefully by the time this project gets going, we'll all be able to, to get there together again soon. So, um, but, uh, uh, you know, like I said, we're, we're here, we're in town, you know, we're, we're out here and we're listening. Uh, I, I've got some ideas to, to, to make some changes to the concept and, and um, you know, Jeff and I are going to regroup and, you know, this you know, probably won't be our last conversation, I'm guessing. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to take up too much time. If there's anybody else that would like to offer some additional comments. Just, yeah, do you guys, do you guys know why this is even a through street with no power going up to, you know, why does it, why does our street connect to 83? Right? Why? Why is this not a dead end somewhere? Because that—that's one of the, the major concerns with this, right? If this was a wide path, wider road, and it didn't go somewhere, right? I got the, the two kids who are going to see a, a path across the street from me that's not on the road. They're going to ride their bikes down that, and I'll be honest, you, I could go easily 50 miles an hour down the hill in front of my house, easy on a road bike, no problem, 50 miles an hour. I'm going to have kids doing the same thing on a sidewalk across the house and right, the town's going to take on that liability on those blonde driveways. And I, I tell you right now that that sort of risk I manage, I would never do that. <laughs> I mean, well, why, why is this a through street if we're going to repay it? Why not break it somewhere? No, I mean, the cops go up and shoot their guns all hours of the night or whatever at the top of the hill. Um, but why, why is it even a through street at this point? It, it doesn't serve any purpose. It, it, is that, it is a collector road. Why is it like that? Is probably somebody rode their horse and, and that are, you know, established a trail um, and eventually became a road. But, um, you know, it is a collector road uh, along with Lion Street. Um, disconnecting any of that would force more traffic to other local roads. So, um, you know, it is what it is. We have to do our best to redesign it, you know, maintaining. Yeah, I know, I know you guys say you walk the road a couple of times, but come up here on a Sunday when it's like peak mountain bike season in the summer and there's, I mean, you can't be out on the road without, yeah, without probably every five minutes somebody coming up the road to either hike or mountain bike or smoke a blunt or whatever they do up on the top end of the street. I mean, there's, there's zero, I've never seen a cop actually patrol this neighborhood, right? That you can sit in my driveway and hit every single person up here with a speeding ticket. But if there's zero and uh, you guys widen it, you get path, there's less people, people are just gonna rip up this road, like unbelievable. And uh, I'll be honest with you, that, you know, some, I, I was giving my opinion, somebody will get killed. In the next five years, you guys widen this road, you bring the traffic off, people crossing, pulling out their driveways, which are in some cases blind, especially between winding and fern. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of risk, guys. I wouldn't take it if it was me. Right. No Sam, yeah. Just a quick question. Steve, just, just, just wondering out loud, what is the ADT on the road? It be more than 2,000 vehicles a day, right? So we have very minimal traffic on this road. So the ADT can't exceed 2,000 mm -hmm. vehicles a day, is my guess. Get the tubes down. So we don't have. A lot less before the bike paths opened. Yeah, but do you guys that. actually have do you guys actually have data on that? Because I've never driven over a road counter on this road ever. No, they won't have, have data. data. Say how many road, do you have data? To say how many people come off the road? It would Otherwise, just, it's speculation because I live here. Common sense. I mean, we don't have a vehicle every five minutes crossing my driveway. I've lived here for twenty years, so we have a low volume, low speedway roadway. So I just want to clarify some things for folks that have lived here for a long time. So I'll be quiet after this. Thank you. All right. I'm going to open it up to other people who have not spoken, give them opportunity. Uh, I know Kent has turned in, he want, he's ready to speak. So Kent, if you're ready. John, I'll go to you next. Oh, Kent? Yep, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm ready if you can hear me okay. Yes. Um, my camera is not working, so I, uh, I don't know if you can see me or not. But um, anyway, the... Um, uh, I, I think, you know, generally I would uh, just comment that I agree with, with Steve O'Neill, which, which as my brother-in-law is not something I do very often. Um, but the, the only thing that I would say is I think it is very unfortunate that as part of the project, we will end up having to lose some of the mature trees. 
um, but I also understand that that's part of um, doing the project this really can't be avoided. Um, other than that, I think you know the comments that Steve made about the width of the road um, really address a lot of the comments and concerns that people have. I know that there's a popular misconception that there are extremely high speeds on the road. That's because it's a small road and people are close to the vehicles and they think they're going very fast. Um, I don't think that there really is a speeding problem most of the time. Um, there are certainly cars at speed. As to there not being police in the neighborhood, there's actually a police shooting range on the road, and there are police on the road every day. So I'm not sure where that comes from. Um, I think it's very important. I'm with here, and, and the, trust me, I, I, I understand what speed is, and you're, I'm sorry, I just have to disagree with you. You're wrong. People speed. There's not a single car that goes up, up and down the street. Yeah, it's more. To be able to make my comments without you interrupting me, thank you. So, if there is some concern about that, I'm sure the town could put out speed counters and they could determine what the actual 85th percentile speed is. The more important thing is what the design speed is for the road that's being constructed, and that can be addressed, as Steve mentioned, by keeping a very narrow width, 18 to 20 feet. So, which is what it currently is in most sections. Um, so. I would just say that um, I agree with uh, Steve's comments. I've submitted my comments in writing. Um, I recognize that this is a preliminary plan and there's still a lot of details that have to be worked out. And I appreciate the uh, town giving us an opportunity to be involved at this point before things become definite and it makes it harder to change. So thank you very much. I would like to make another comment about the rate of speed on the road. So I've lived, this is Jane Whitehead again. Yeah. I've lived at the top of Manchester where that very significant hill where the guardrail needed to be put in. And I have heard on numerous occasions people going airborne off of that hill. This road in the more recent times has not had as much of a rate of speed, I think only because there, it's in such poor condition. But before that, it was horrific. You would hear people basically come up over Line Street into the straightaway past Will's house and just gun it. Okay. Thanks. And then they would get to that hill and they would go airborne. Okay, and so. I would also like to say that the people who have very large frontages, you know, away from Gardner Street are not going to be as aware of the rate of speed as the other people who live in the older homes that are literally right on the road. And okay. I just don't think that people have that concept of speed on the road when they're, you know, a quarter of a mile off the road. All right, thank you, Jane. Just just to keep things in order, I, there are a few people here who have not spoken yet, so I'm going to give them the opportunity to do, and then we'll come back and make sure everybody has their final word. So I'm going to call on John. Next. John, we can't hear you. Is this the John that you're? No, no. no. Oh, there's another? No. John Vicky. <laughs> yeah, I think his mic might be out. He just texted me to his mic is out. OK, then I'm going to go um, to Kate. And then we'll, we'll come back to John. Great. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Great. So my name is Kate Boucher. I live at 473 Gardner Street with my partner, John Unteed. We're the house that had the uh, trees cut down this past summer, um, the deepest part of the hill. I think um, we are fully supportive of the road reconstruction. The road is in terrible shape. It has been for quite some time. It's had a notice of 
the maintenance impact on our vehicles. But we have very mixed feelings about any additional path, whether it's a sidewalk or a maintenance path. Um, at one point, uh, John, you said that the project is going to stop before the intersection of Line Street. Um, I'd urge you to sort of reconsider that just because the pavement at the intersection of Line and Gardner Street is some of the worst on the road. If you're going to pave it, you really should consider paving that part. Um, we do have a couple of questions about the project. I'm hoping John or Jeff can answer tonight. Um, one, are you do you have any comments on whether or not we will be responsible for snow or leaf removal on this path in front of the property? So currently, if, if it is end up being a, a shared use path designated, um, there is no winter maintenance responsibility uh, because it's multi-use. If it ends up being more of a sidewalk, um, would have to would have to think about that. I know it would still be bituminous, um, but I'm just going off what our current ordinances say. Understood. Um, do you have any information about where the utility poles will be relocated as part of this? Will they be in substantially the same spots they're currently in? Usually, they just move. Get them out. And we try to work around them as much as possible, so we're going to try to minimize that. But yeah, it would just be moved slightly one way or the other. And before you go, I, I, I do want to answer your first question, too. I'm, I'm surprised you're the first one to talk about it. Um, so we are we are stopping at that point uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, this, we do have limited funding, um, so we're stopping there, but uh, Line Street and Wine Hill Road, we are proposing to put on next bond, this year's bond referendum, which would fund next year's and the year after's paving. So our, our thought was that wherever we end with this project would start right up probably next year and continue Line Street and Wine Hill as well. Thanks. Um... I guess um, our last question is timeline on this project. Obviously, there's this, this is the initial phase and there's issues to be worked out, but you have a date about when you anticipate to start and end construction. So, a lot's going to depend on how we can come up and come up with the best design here. But, we, you know, our thought was we're going to try to get this out so that construction can begin this summer. Possibly like a late June, July timeframe. Um, and again, depending on the how many, how reducing the road width is clearly going to eliminate many of our walls. So that's going to cut down on the project timeline. Uh, but the goal would be to try to get most of the work done by the end of the year and probably come back in the spring for some finished work. Very similar to what we did on Hillstown Road. Where the, the road, the grade in the road, and maybe some grass, and fences, and some other finish work early next spring. All right. We do have a couple of um, property specific concerns we'd like to discuss with you. Um, we'll shoot you an email, see if we can set up a time to walk the property. Just to give you a preview, we're not really sure how any of this can be accomplished in front of our house without a retaining wall. We have you know, the steepest part of the road there and we were staring at it the other day um, so we'd love to a chance to walk it i think that's it for our comments we'll we'll submit some everything as well thanks i do want to mention uh, this meeting is being recorded as well so if, um if you don't need to submit in writing for it to be officially on the project record so. but we'll accept it either way John, did you fix your mic? Sorry, I just wanted to I wanted to summarize from you know my locale on this. Uh, everyone I've heard on the line is unsupportive. Besides, 
the wealthy family, the O'Neills in town, who seem like driving the project. And if you think if you think it's not going to have a massive impact, the rest of us that live on the road, who pay our taxes and raise kids in this neighborhood, um, I don't see any other support for this, guys. I'm really sorry. I, I get that you guys are trying to do the best. This is your job. I wouldn't want to be this doing this at eight o'clock either. But um, yeah, it's not the right call for the neighborhood. I'm sorry, guys. I like, I like the rest of the work we're doing around town. They have the road, widen it for what you need to, to to make sure you got current standards. But the rest of it, it's it's not for people in this neighborhood. It's not for the residents of Manchester. That's not what this is. And uh, yeah, gladly speak to you more about that. <laughs> anyone else, Leslie? Anyone else that has not spoken? Yeah, um, I also want to say I'm not entirely in support of this either. Um, cars really do go by the road very quickly um and i think that like the potholes like jane said do slow people down i know it slows me down <laughs> um i i think widening the road i've actually heard somebody say to me the other day they're like you know when i'm in your neighborhood you know i i kind of feel that it's like I slow down there because you don't know and uh I was thinking oh well it's going to change soon because you know it's going to be like smooth and like um yeah just just people going fast is my main concern and also um if you widen the road and um I don't know that Jane brought this up Jane um but there's septic systems in their front yard and I believe also Dave, who lives next to Jane, uh, his septic system's also in his front yard. I don't know if that's going to cause any issue with them because if they have to like relocate their septic system, um, I would like, I would like uh, more drainage would be great for at least my side of the road. I know I have like, uh, my driveway is crumbling because there's not enough water drainage. So I, I would like that to be addressed. I wouldn't mind the road being paved, but widening it, I think, um, like others have said, it'll take away from the charm of that very specific locale where we live in, which is also why I bought a house there. So that's my two cents anyway. Jeff, you're muted, but thank you, Leslie. Yep. About that. Thank you. I think it's unanimous about the road width. Um, I think we're definitely going to look at reducing that. So, okay, um, that'd be great. And what about the sidewalk? Is there any way that the sidewalk would not happen? Um, we would have to seriously consider it if, if the majority of people don't want it. I mean, yeah i'm definitely not for it and also personally i would love if our road became a dead end that would solve i know it's not going to happen but in my dreams it would become a dead end like especially for like the girl scouts like i feel that they would be safer that way it was talked know. about like 10 or 15 years ago to just make it a walking path after the girl scouts i mean that would be like really charming really and if there would be like a nice you know parking lot because honestly there isn't a good parking lot except for you know on line street there's like a little parking lot but then you know cars have to line up on the side of the road which isn't so bad but it is kind of like people go really fast down line street too you know so uh as Jeff kind of mentioned, you know, we, we, we look at that whole curve between Line Street and Gardner Street needs to be done in, as one piece. So, you know, we've looked at moving the curve onto the Line Street project. I, I had some questions from folks I don't think that are at the meeting about that parking lot. I know a couple of you mentioned it. Um, I've got some uh, wetlands markings that were done in the vicinity of it. I wanted to look to see if, if uh, you know, how close the wetlands were, if I had surplus material that I could, you know, perhaps consider, you know, 
enhancing or something with that parking lot. Um, you know, the info I got back, it, it needs, uh, you know, more investigation, which I think would be more appropriate when, you know, like Jeff said, if we're able to bond and fund road work on Pine Street, you know, we can also consider taking a look at that as well. A lot of the land in the area, uh, you know, at Pine Street and Gardner Street is, is part of the water department's land and, and they have facilities down there that they need access to. So uh, they're, they're another, they're not, I know they're not present here tonight, but they're another uh, about her that we've received some feedback from as well. Is there anyone else who um, has not commented that would like to comment? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? This is Matt Farrell. Yes, Matt. Yes. Hey, guys. So yeah, uh, I feel a little reticent to speak because I don't live on Gardner, but my mom did for years, and uh, Will Edgington bought the house. I know Will, I know John Vicky, I know Seth Zaleski, I know the O'Neills. So my only thought is I'm an avid, avid cyclist, uh, both road, mountain bike. <clears throat> I never ride uh, Gardner Street on the road uh, just due to its condition with a road bike, as well as the speeds. I think... There's definitely a speed issue heading northbound, and I think it's mitigated by, I think as Jane mentioned it, the uh, the poor condition. But I think once there's a smooth road, the town should definitely expect an uptick in speed increase. I think if Line Street's not paved <clears throat> or repaved, the traffic count would probably be similar as it is now. But once Line Street is completed and if it's smooth, from 83 to Gardner, that a lot more people will start to use that road. And I think you'll see speeds increasing, again, mostly northbound, obviously downhill. Uh, so I worry about what widening might give that opportunity. The only other thing I think, and I'm, I'm assuming it's a money consideration, as far as the path, I've never really seen an asphalt path that doesn't fail. And the town hasn't been great on maintenance as a rule, probably due to budget. But it's almost like if you're if there really is going to be a path, I mean, it needs to be concrete. If it's asphalt, five years later, it's breaking up, doesn't get maintained, doesn't get redone, it's not in the budget, and then it's just a nightmare. So it's just two cents on that. I'm assuming the asphalt is budget versus concrete. It, it's actually not, but it's it's. Um... I think I mentioned earlier, it's, it is part of a sidewalk master plan that was developed with the Planning and Zoning Commission. The intent really was to, in rural areas of town to kind of keep that rural look. Um, that that That's what's driving the, the material versus- budget. Well, it'll definitely be a rural look because it'll all break up and look extra rural. I mean, if you look, if you ride on the bike path from MCC to Spencer Street that they put in. I mean, I can only really ride it on my gravel bike because of the road. It's just, it's falling apart. And as, again, as an avid cyclist, I had mixed feelings when the bike path went up to Bolton because it's like, I get it, but unless it's maintained, as you know, asphalt's, it's asphalt's asphalt, as you know. I mean, it's not going to hold up like like concrete will, and it, it might look, it sure will look, it would look, look very nice for the first few years, but then it's just uh, it's just a unusable eyesore. So it, yeah. it just should be. That's just my opinion. I, I, no, I, I understand what you're saying. I will say, in our defense, there is a, a section of of the greenway that is under the Connecticut Department of Transportation's control, and they're responsible for the condition. We've reported it to them years in a row, and. Right. Uh, it, I, I do know there's a particular section. I'm pretty sure I know exactly where you're talking. That it is not in uh, ideal shape. I, I would agree with that. So is this as the town of Manchester? Then there's a steady plan that hey, we'll maintain this asphalt over the years and we'll repave accordingly. Or is it just kind of there's is there is there a long term plan if if in fact a path is is asphalt or is it just hey we'll 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 take it as it comes because if it's taken as it comes, it's, it's, I, I'm not encouraged. You know, it, it it would fall into the main, you know, into our sidewalk maintenance program, which is actually funded pretty well for most towns. Um, and is that sorry? Is that the same? Is that the same plan that's maintained our road currently? 
No, that, that would be a that, that's a different, totally different funding source. So if this got paved now, when would it be repaved? Are you talking the road or the sidewalk? The sidewalk, because we live on this road, at least a lot of us here, right? And we see the condition. So we're talking, I asked you guys earlier, when was the last repaved? And you didn't know. Um, road, when, road, uh, a lifespan yeah. for a road reconstruction is about 40 years. And for a sidewalk. So, so it'll be repaved again in 40 years or, or the sidewalk sooner? No, the Sorry. road. The road would be likely redone on a, in a 40 to anywhere between a 30 to 50 year cycle. Sidewalks are different. They concrete sidewalks have the same probably 40, 50 year lifespan. Bituminous obviously with the what was just discussed has a much less lifespan, probably on on the order of 15 to 20. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just I wasn't sure. And I will just give you like a, a feel for how I view this road and it, it obviously I've spoke more than I should have in this, but um, right, I, I, I take my kids on all these paths, right? I'm a cyclist, I use Manchester. It's, to be honest with you, it's, it's a little niche here. I think it's a little under underappreciated for a lot of people, but right, I let my kids ride down the, the, uh, the bike path, which I wouldn't view a whole lot different than at least the section that you're gonna put in front of my house between Globe Hollow and Charter Oak, right? And I made the mistake as a foolish parent to let my son go. I, I, I knew it was Steve, so I walked him down halfway. You know, he's, he already can ride a bike, he can pedal, he can stand up on it. I let him go halfway down that, and he made it about 10 feet until he hit a big fissure in it. And what happened? His bar slipped sideways and his face went right into the pavement there, right? And he's going maybe maybe five five eight miles an hour at that point right you didn't break any teeth but it was damn close right and you guys are going to suggest something that's going to be maintained probably on the same timeline as that section between Globe Hollow and Charter Oak um you know if I let my son go at the top up by winding he'd be going easy 30 miles an hour before he hit my neighbor's driveway across the way and right if, if somebody somebody Chuck's hey, can that, I get my you know. two cents in? I got my volume back, and Seth has taken most of this meeting. So if you don't mind, yeah. I'd like to get my two cents before everybody likes to go home. Sure, thank you. Hey, thank you guys so much for your time. I apologize, I had a little technical difficulty, but John Vicky, 551 Gardner, been here 17 years. Probably been asking about what they're going to do with this road for most of those years because of the uh, deterioration of the road. And I understand everybody's. Um, feelings on this and um i don't want to say what about me but i feel like if you look at the plans i'm probably the most impacted of this project so just real quickly um uh, you know i'm going to end up with a um with the bike path it would probably be a retaining wall across 100 feet of my property um i would just like to know if we didn't do the bike path we still require that um retaining wall i, I know that's a quick on the on the feet you know looking for an answer, but. I can, I can, um, if we did not do the sidewalk, we still would have to grade, um, maybe not necessarily as wide, but we would have to grade an area, maybe five feet off the curb line at least, just to have a safe place for snow. And, you know, for the, if you did need to get off the road and, and kind of seek refuge next to the curb. Um, I think yep. the combination of, reducing the road width along with either eliminating or reducing the sidewalk width i think that's what's going to drive the need for that high retaining wall down i don't know if it will eliminate it or not that will will definitely be in contact with you in more detail but right okay yeah i didn't want to take up everybody's time because i know that like i said i have a lot of questions um um but but per se that 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 sidewalk are the will the owners be in charge of the maintenance of this path if it's there or is that a town maintenance as far as snow and and all that is that can consider like a uh, a um sidewalk now where you have to maintain the snow i think it's a lot's going to depend on the width if, if it the way our current ordinances read if it is a kind of a, a shared use path trail type of thing, there is no winter maintenance responsibility. Um, if it ends up being more of a sidewalk, a four foot wide or 
so sidewalk um i'd have to look at that because even though it's by two minutes versus concrete you know i think it would still fall under as a sidewalk but i think it's more okay. than that all right well i know i know john's been very receptive to my emails like i said i've been following this for a while so i'll reach out to you i won't waste anybody's time but um for the record i think the last thing we want to do is make a uh parking lot for the bikers that are using our area um you know it's a rural area let's keep it rural we don't need to pave a parking lot so more cars can park on line street um and you know what there's a benefit to both sides but you know we've been here a long time and i commend the o'neills for all their uh their homework and the schwendies i mean they're uh obviously been here a lot longer than most of us so um I just appreciate you guys, all the hard work the engineers in Manchester are doing, and uh, I'll be in touch. Thanks Thank for your time. Thank you. Thanks, John. I will uh, just maybe throw out there, you know, that's, his uh, frontage there is a good example of, um, you know, if we have a discussion and, and we can kind of review the, the limits and the extent that we can do grading, I, I you know, don't have enough uh, survey information to be able to accurately grade um, without that wall. So I inserted the wall in order to be able to represent something. Um, can we reduce that wall height? Most likely, you know, do we reduce the shelf temporarily to do it? Do we do we adjust the width road, the path, both? Um, all those things will play into the, you know, the, the, the final um, length of need, uh, the final heights, uh, things like that. So the, there's, um, you know, a lot of things can change based on the feedback we've received. So, um, you know, uh, we need to have, a, like I said, a few more conversations, maybe even one on one uh, as we kind of you know, are able to look and review it into some of the details. There's uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, you know, Seth, you're talking about that uh, maintenance path between Charter Oak and Globe. Uh, you know, if there are damages in that path, be sure to go on, you know, the town's website, use market, report it. Uh, if we're not fully aware of uh, you know these issues as they pop up, we can't easily respond to them. So you know your folks are living out in these areas. You know, please let us know if there's issues, potholes, things like that. If you put it into market, Public Works does go out, review, and respond. So uh, I, I will make a pitch for that. Uh, it does work. I would like to say one more thing. I'm sorry if I've taken up a lot of the time, but. Historically, I know that there was interest in cul de sac the road past the Girl Scout camp. And I know that the easy answer is we can't do that. But there's three other access roads from Gardner Street out to 83. We have Fern Street, we have Spring Street, and we have Camp Meeting Charter Oak. And I think that, again, this is a pristine area. This is watershed land. I think we should really be concentrating on protecting this property from people cutting through, people dumping in the woods, which happens all the time. Fortunately, it appears to be a lot of only uh, garden refuse, but occasionally there's pieces of furniture. I've seen large um, dumping of tiles out in the parking lot by the bicycles parking lot. God forbid someone dumps something awful someday. I just think that we have to think as a community to protect this property because it's not just about the people who are the residents. This is the, this is the land that feeds everybody's water supply. And I think that it's easy to say, no, we can't do that. But I think we can do that. And I think that's ultimately the, the answer for Gardner Street is to finally not have it be a cut through access recreational roadway. It's just a tiny little rural beautiful area that should be preserved and i think the best way to do that is to cul de sac the road and then we would not need all this build up of infrastructure because it just would be for people and for bicycling and for the few residents that live on the very top of the hill thank you 
Thank you. Is there anyone else who um, would like to speak that hasn't spoke yet? Okay. Um, anyone who have, else who has spoke that wants to put in anything else before we say the one thing I do want to add for all those people that we're going to meet, um, I think I think we want to have a little bit of time to kind of regroup and do a little bit of a, a redesign based on the comments that we have received before we get out. It doesn't make sense going out and saying we're going to be cutting back 20 feet when we're just going to redesign it and it may be five or 10. So it, it may be a couple, two or three weeks before we actually do meet. Um, but, um, you know, I, I do appreciate all the comments. Um, I think it's going to be going to be tough to meet everybody's needs here, but hopefully we can come up with something that uh, is at least a compromise for many of you. So be before I end that, is there anyone else who would like to say anything? Yeah, I, I just want to amplify the some of the my comment before and what others have said about uh, some of the the speed issues. Um, you know, we have two places, and you know, I know you're aware of these. There's um, uh, the hill, um, and uh, from from Line Street going going uh, north, um, you hit the hill, which is a sharp drop at the end of a long straightaway, and um, you know, it's not everybody going down there 60 miles an hour, but people do tend to go fast, and it's a nasty little hill. It's blind. Um, and the next one, a little further down, is not only a hill, but it twists uh, a couple of ways. And uh, that's kind of dicey if there's another car coming, if there's, uh, so I don't know what kinds of um, uh, measures could be taken to uh, mitigate that speed, whether speed bumps are a practical thing or you know, so combined with signage. Uh, but, um, I think that's an issue that, that deserves some consideration for, for safety's sake. And again, thank you for your time, and I look forward to, to meeting with you. Thank you, John. John, John yeah, I, didn't, I didn't mean to take so much of the meeting. I apologize if it came off that way. You guys are doing the right thing. And yeah, just it's concerned residents, guys, but I appreciate the time. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, John, do you have any? Uh, um, yeah, actually, I just I wanted to say uh, I think it was John that mentioned the the sight lines on Burn Street. That's definitely something that we're going to be looking at. Sight lines from both the Forks and uh, Winding Hill. Just uh, if if they don't meet the standards, you know, we'll do what we can within reason. Uh, you know, without you know going above and beyond to try and improve those as we can, uh, recognizing any of the constraints. Um, and last. Uh, we have uh, our contact information on our letter. Also, the um, uh, I, I posted the email address in the chat there. So um, feel free if you think of anything afterwards, or you know, while you're uh, laying in bed tonight and you want to shoot us a note in the morning, you know, we're, we're still receptive to additional feedback. Um, you know, like I just said, we're gonna you know go back to we're gonna regroup on this uh, you know next week and and discuss kind of uh, the summary of. Our discussion here, which was very beneficial to us, you know, I'm glad you all were able to participate, uh, and also the uh, some of the correspondence we've received, and then we'll we'll be in touch. I, I imagine, you know, we'll have a we'll come up with a new concept uh, based on some of the feedback, and then uh, you know we'll be we'll be following up. So uh, you know, keep an eye on your your mail right now. That's the, the best way for us to reach you. Um, however, if you do reach out by email, you know, please. Please provide, you know, let us know your name, uh, your email address, and it does help if you contact us and you do provide your address. You don't have to, but if you do, it kind of helps us kind of hone in on particular areas of interest. So, uh, unless anybody else has any last last thoughts or comments, uh, I think I'll, I'll bring the meeting to a close so I can wrap up and uh, eventually make my way home too. So, uh, everybody, uh, you know, uh, that's it. Um, please uh, stay safe. Um, Thank you again, and we shall be in touch. Great. Thanks, everybody. Great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.